Today I'm going to try to show you how I set up my crabbing gear, especially utilizing the Proma hoop nets. I've been using Proma hoop net for several years uh, before it was mandatory to catch Dungeness crab in Northern California, mainly chasing lobsters in Southern California. I feel like I'm kind of quite experienced using this net and I like to share how I set up my gear. That way, you know, I, I try many different uh, bait cages, you know, different type buoys and different type of lines and several different type of, to carry five, typically I carry five Proma, one uh, sometimes in my solo outback kayak and sometimes on my uh, tandem Oasis kayak, that's why I got different setup to carry all these things. And I like to start with the, how I set up my uh, hoop net. And at the hoop net, I put a stainless steel carabiner with the lockable to able to easily connect my rope and not worry about it getting undone or lose my hoop net. And I like to use a bait bag. Uh, I try uh, the, the, the bait bags are quite convenient to able to shove in as much as uh, chicken or link cut head in there and, and additionally sometimes I use a little uh, Scotty bait plastic can to attach it to I try to attach it to the bottom secure it then connect my rope to it here and using carabiner but I can also uh, or my rope I put a, a loop at the end that way I don't have any knot anything that way I can also use the loop to connect it and I like to use the only the quarter inch uh, lead rope instead of using the 5 16 inch which is more popular or common I start with the 5 16 inch, but the quarter inch is much easier to manageable in the kayak and it takes less volume and I never had to worry about the strength capacity. And there are many different ways to organize your rope, but I use these, uh, I guess, Christmas light organizer as the most effective way. And I start with the one end, that's where my buoy goes. And other end, the free end is going to go down to the, my crab pot, and I just unwind it. And after I'm done unwinding at the required length, I just loop around one side and connect like that. That way, it doesn't unwind anymore. And please, please use the lead core line or sinkable line. Do not use the line that floats around. It gets tangled on other people's uh, boat, propeller, and kayak rudder, and I think that's uh, quite unpolite. You know, we want to make sure we are not causing any hazard to other kayakers or boarders. So, you know, I know it costs about $50 for 400 feet of this. That's so when you start off. I think if you buy one of those 400 fit spool that's at good length to make like five of this I I have two set of lines one's a 75 footer that can probably allow you to catch crab up to 60 feet I like to have about 20 25 percent additional flexibility that way with the current shifting and stuff I I'm not going to lose my buoy and the, the ocean with the fast current and stuff that you uh, I have also 120 foot line that I use for depth about up to about 100 feet and this is my uh, crab bag or I put my crab in here and if I'm going to tend them to my wife I carry an extra bag and here I got to carry two which is critical I always have an extra crab gauge that way, if you lose one, you still got one. If I go tandem, we got two. And I do have another one inside my kayak too. And I've been, been experienced with the sharing one of my crab gauge with the, my buddy. Sometimes they forget to bring out in the water. And in here, I simply carry all my rope until I get to site. Then after I get to site, I connect the rope 
and put the bait then I do attach my buoy as I'm ready to drop in the water because that takes a lot of room and when you're stacking with the buoy it gets quite high that's why that's uh, one of the reasons I attach a buoy at the end and this is Scotty puller a uh, little roller attachment with the Scotty rod holder this is a great tool when you're pulling the heavy load of a uh, hoops or you know depth it's a lot of workout and uh, one of the things nice about this is it changes direction of you, you pull instead you're pulling it you can push it down that makes it, I think about 30 40 percent more effective or makes it easier for you to pull up and on my crab bag I do have a, a strong thousand pound loaded line with the big uh, tuna clip able to clip into my kayak make sure I don't lose the entire bag and my crab gauge I do have a little I do have a small tuna clip attached to the elastic line that way I can clip to my kayak it gives me you know pull out my crab gauge to able to make it easier to measure the crabs without losing the crab gauge I know a lot of people drop in the water and when we go out in tandem my wife likes to have a little thing to have to catch the buoy easier that's why I, this is like two foot long you know we last one in the water that's like a little buoy dangling make sure we don't lose it but I cut off the end of gaff that's right I don't have a I don't have any more sharp hook so you can when you're reaching down you know you don't want to reach out so far in your kayak that's why you can use this gaff to grab the kayak so this bag comes in really handy able to store all your you know 10 dungeness crab in here or seven lobsters so well organized I think it costs about $25 and my buoy, I got some, I always try to number my buoy, one through five, that's right. I try to drop them in sequence. And people who've been around, they know sometimes you cannot get find your buoy. Whenever I drop my buoy, I always put a mark on my fish finder. That way you can go back. And once I re relocate different location, I save a new location and delete the old location. So I carry this big carabiner clip into my kayak, that way I have it. And when I go to my wife, it's her job to hand me in right sequence. That's all. You know, once we start dropping, she give me all these buoys in sequence. And I'm going to show you uh, on my, under my description how I tie this knot. So I, just, I just got knot at the top and bottom. That did not go into one of these loops I already pre made on my all my loops. I made it kind of big here, that way it's easier to fit through buoys and you know, hoop nets attached to it. I'm going to also show you the description. It's just some work to do that, but I think it's much better than trying to tie a knot or you know, knots get tangled when I pull through my pulleys too. Which I think this way is much more organized and effective. And I cannot emphasize more for kayakers try to use a quarter inch lead line or other type of sinkable line. A quarter inch is much more workable. And this is a kind of rough surface that I recommend using a, some type of gloves. And five how I carry my all my five home nets. This is my setup for carrying my single uh, Outback kayak, it's kind of hanging upside down, which I'm not going to pull it down to show you. But I do carry that under my front. Uh, I pl plug that in my front sailing holder position on my Outback. And I do have a couple D-rings on my kayak that I attach to D-rings using this clip. That way it doesn't uh, become undone. And I just set the hook nest catching both of those. Uh, rods or just anywhere around here and I do not have room in the front of my tandem oasis uh, here you can see I'm hanging on my ceiling which I do carry this on my rear and using the scuffle hole like that 
you know, that way that pole sticks away from me, then I just stack my hoop net on, on top of that. That's why that can easily carry five with my rope and bait, everything pre-attached. That's how I do it, and hopefully you guys are safe out there and catch your Dungeness Crab Limits. Thank you.